gonna say hi to you. YouTube, what's good? I'm on the phone with Jazz and shit. Uh, you see this fucker right here? Go ahead and say it. Somebody please leave it in the comment. Bring up that guy's name. Let me know part one to part five. Uh, is it part one to part five? Yeah, whatever. Okay, y'all know what the title is of this video. Um, doing a time about on this. Time about job uh, pays about six, seven hours. So I don't know how we still got from part one to part five. Not me. We. But whatever. This is a day's work job. It can be done in your fucking driveway. The hardest part of this fucking job is pretty much the move in. The uh, bracket for the uh, power steering. Um, you gotta move the drive belt. Of course, take off the crank pulley. Uh, discharge the AC. Uh, take off this front, uh, the front upper radiator support, like the whole big bracket bullshit thing. Remove that. Take off a few uh, strut mounts, torque mounts, or whatever. And uh, it just requires just jacking the engine up and down and shit. So uh, in this video, I'm going to show you guys. Not going to show you guys how to do the whole job, but for the most part, I'll show you guys how to remove. Not install, remove the timing belt. Installing it is the same procedure. That's why I won't waste any time showing you guys how to, how the belt goes on. Unless it's something like a Honda where you gotta re rotate the crankshaft uh, three notches to the right and then uh, try to set it on that way, like an offset timing type bullshit just to get it set. This ain't that type deal. It's really straightforward and shit. Regular tensioner. Tighten it, lock it in place, that bullshit. So if you give me a minute, um, I'm gonna finish removing the lower uh, timing cover once I get the lower timing cover removed. And then we're gonna begin the job and tell you guys how to fucking set the marks, when it's at top dead center, and how to fucking remove the fucking belt. So make sure you guys hit the like, the like button, make sure you guys fucking subscribe, all right? Okay, so we're gonna begin the job. So now, I don't know where you at as far as working on a car and shit, but me, where I'm at with things, I'm literally at the peak of the fucking job. I'm ready to get the fucking bed off. I got the upper cover removed and the lower cover. As you can see, both covers right there. And that's the uh, bottom. So, we see what's what with that, right? Alright, so the first thing you want to do in a situation before you get the bed off. Look at my finger. Before you get the belt off, set the timing at TDC. Top dead center. You don't know what top dead center is. You don't need to be doing this fucking job, but... There are a shitload of mechanics that know what it is and still can't do a fucking time and belt job. Alright, so the first thing, one, like I said, want to put it at top dead center. There are multiple ways you can put it at top dead center. Me, what I always use, I always use the alignment marks that come on a fucking cam. Sometimes if you pay attention to this cam, like right here, got like a little notch right here. And then there is another one um, right down in there. I can't be able to, can't see it because it's a shitty camera angle, but I can see it. So you follow that one right there. And then at the bottom, if you can see, that arrow on the back on the block side. And then you have an arrow right there that's lined up with the keyway right here that's on the... Um, the gear itself, the pulley, the, you know, the gear itself. So, arrow, arrow, you know, these two are going to line up, of course. And you have this one right here where it's going to meet, if I can remember where the timing marks are. If I'm wrong, I'll be sure to correct myself, but I'm almost certain that they meet somewhere in the center. So, I'll be rotating the crank until the bottom crank is lined up on the uh you know the arrows are lined up at the bottom where the uh, crankshaft is and then the two notches that's on the cam gear itself they're going to line up too so and another way that you know you can confirm to make sure everything is set you can stick a long screwdriver inside of the uh cylinder uh that's not going to work let me get another one for you all right grab the screwdriver i got an extra long one don't have to be a screwdriver make sure it's something long so I'm gonna rest this on top of the piston. This is the top of the piston that I'm tapping. I'm gonna be going all crazy trying to fuck shit up because most likely he ain't strong enough to fuck it up. But you probably could, but don't fuck nothing up. So sit it on top of the piston just like that. Let it sit there. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your crankshaft, uh, your bolt for your crankshaft, and you're gonna put it. You're gonna thread it in all the way till it stops, and then. Pretty much you're gonna turn this shit by hand and I'm gonna fucking line, uh, make sure my, mar my markings are on set, make sure it's good and shit. And then, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go from there and shit. All right, guys, so I hope this is uh, adequate uh, 
you know, brightness for you as far as the, uh, can y'all see is what I'm trying to say. If you can see, we're fucking good. So like I said, the notch that is on the fucking, uh, you know, sprocket itself is right over there. And there's another one on here itself. So those two are going to line up in the center, like I said. And I'm going to get the uh, crankshaft lined up at the bottom as well, too. So I'm going to, you can't see what I'm doing, but I can because I'm the narrator, right? So I'm hooking up uh, some tools, you know, some hand tools, a half inch socket. I mean, ratchet, half inch ratchet with a 19 millimeter socket. And uh, I double up on some extensions. All right, so it looks like I'm going to be rotating things uh, clockwise. So I'm not counting backwards. So I'm going to be turning it to the right. So uh, ready? We ready? Let me get some extra light so you guys can see. All right, ready to go? Oh, this is fucking clear for you guys, but whatever. So I'm beginning to rotate it right now, and I'm going clockwise. Clockwise, I mean, I'm sorry. Now pay attention um, to the screwdriver itself. So let me... All right, sorry guys, I had to redo everything because I, I wanted you guys to see the screwdriver and shit. So pay attention to the screwdriver. It should travel down until before it rises back up. That's uh, BDC, you know, bottom dead center. When it comes back up to the top and before it drops down, that's TDC. So pay attention to that. So here's one mark right here. And you can't see. I'm sorry you guys can't see. Like I said, I'll, I'll show you in a second. But I just want to show you guys the screwdriver. So pay attention. And when you're at top dead center, your mark should be, you know, on point. So I'm coming back up from BDC. Now you're building up compression. So sometimes it'll be hard, you know, for you to turn this shit. So starting to max out from the top before I drop back down. And looks like I'm at TDC. So let me check my cam gear. And if we can see good, let me zoom in for a second. I don't know if you guys can see. Can you see? Let me dim the light some too. All right, if you can see right here, um, I'm at TDC because the screwdriver maxed up from the top and you watch the screwdriver rock went from BDC to TDC. So on my sprockets, my cam sprockets, I have one little alignment mark right there and another alignment mark right there. So they're both on and I know they're on because I confirmed it with the screwdriver. You don't always have to use the screwdriver, but I use it because I want you guys to see. And I'm real anal on my shit. So I'm gonna take the camera off the tripod and we wanna see the, uh, the crankshaft at the bottom with the, uh, the marking on the sprocket lining up with the block itself. So give me one second. All right, so. I'm on the ground right now. As you can see, I got my jack set up with my block of wood in between. And um, as you can see, that yellow marking right there. Let me get some light for you. And I don't want to, you know, blind you guys or whatever. But if you can see, that arrow is supposed to be lined up with the arrow right behind it on the block that I pointed at earlier. Um, you can't see it from this angle. It may look off like there's an offset or something, but it's just the camera angle. Um, from, my, from my view... That shit is fucking dead on. So being as though it's dead on from the bottom. And then it's dead on from the top. Those two fucking alignment marks. If we can fucking see. Those right there. So basically we Gucci. Uh, the belt is pretty much ready to be removed. The only thing you got to do is uh, start by taking off the uh, belt tensioner. Once you get the belt tensioner off. Pull the fucking belt off. And you fucking good. That's it. All right, guys, so I'm going to remove the, uh, I got the camera set up on the tripod again. I know you guys want to see, but you see from here. Now, how hard is it to take off a fucking uh, a tensioner for a belt, right? And I'm not trying to insult nobody's intelligence, but if you don't understand most of the shit I'm talking about, this job ain't for you because you're going to fuck your engine up. And I'm pretty sure that guy, he didn't talk about it either. So I want to back it off once I get it lined up on this boat. It's a 13 millimeter boat.
And as I'm rotating this, this, because it's losing its tension once I take off this bolt, because it keeps the, uh, the tensioner locked in place as far as tightness go and shit. So once I back this off, I just feel some slack in the, um, the belt, which I do feel slack in the belt. As soon as you feel slack in the belt, go ahead and remove the belt off. You can literally slide it off the groove like I'm about to do right now. So uh, I want to start. Yeah, my tension is definitely loose. So good on that. I'm going to slide it off the crank first. Actually, it's not going to work. So I might try to slide it off the pulley itself. And it is off the pulley now. So I took it off the pulley. Off of actually the pulley from the belt tensioner. Took it off that. And I'm working it off at the bottom. You can go any order you want. But make sure your timing marks are fucking set. They not set. Your paycheck going to be set. Alright, so we get the knowledge on that. So... Go ahead and pull this out. Make sure I ain't got nothing in my way. All right. So that's that. That's how you fucking remove the fucking belt. Time now is 8.40. Time to go to fuck home. I started this shit in the afternoon. Uh, I don't remember exactly. Uh, I think at 12. Uh, I had to do a few things in between. But for the most part, I was able to get the belt back on. That was the most part most important part for me. I wasn't going to leave out of here without getting the belt back on. So the belt is on. Uh, getting the belt on. Let me, let me show you real quick. It's a pain in the fucking ass. Pain in the fucking ass. And I kind of don't even recommend this job to, you know, others and shit. So, yeah, look at a little bit of space I'm working with in between and shit. Uh, for the most part, the hardest part of this fucking job was getting the belt around the uh, timing belt tensioner. Um, pretty much what I did to get it back on once I made sure that my alignment marks was good on the cam sprockets and on the kink Yo, I'm on a crank pulley no, Hold on the what? Huh? No. no, dude, you can't the part of the tire. Yeah, it's part of the fucking tire um, For the most part I made sure the crank The crank the sprocket was good on the crank and the arrow it was pointing towards the arrow uh, lined up at the arrow and then the cam sprockets were fucking uh, the little notches on there. Oh, let me key on this one. If you notice in the video, there are up arrows that goes up. And you got alignment marks on both sides of the cam per cam. So if you saw that my up arrow was down, but my alignment marks was still on. And I was still on at the fucking crank. So I was, technically, I was still lined up. I've done plenty of fucking belt jobs where I kind of made my own timing marking i've done a, a timing belt job at uh you know bottom dead center before bdc it all comes down to lining the motor up that's the important part lining the motor up before you take the belt off if you don't like alignment marks you can make up your own alignment marks that's you i still follow follow the procedure in the books and shit or whatever um and i mean service manual and well kind of i didn't mess up but like i said i did it my way uh, I made sure the piston was at top dead center. We saw that with the screwdriver. And like I said, the up arrows was facing down. It's supposed to be up, but facing down. But either way, I had alignment marks, uh, two spots of the fucking uh, to sprocket on each sprocket. So it could be up, it could be down. The arrow, it was still on. So I, I still got it on. What are you trying to use? The air holes don't work on that one. Um, Get G's gun off of his, uh, use my socket and get his gun off of the car. So, uh, I don't, re I don't rec recommend this job to anybody else. Only because it's a pain in the ass. Getting the belt back on. I mean, taking the belt off is cool. But getting it back on was a pain in the ass because the belt, um, the belt, original belt was kind of like stretched a little bit. So you had some type of, some type of slack. The new one, it comes snug fit like fucking it's hard as fuck to get it get it on because it's a fresh ass belt that has never been fucking stretched or whatnot and shit. so uh yeah i'm getting out of here i'm gonna go home edit this video and shit um when you're doing this job if you end up moving the crankshaft make sure it don't move a lot make sure it moves if it moves moves a little bit
uh, your cam sprockets, if they move, um, we all know what happens if the top part of the motor is not synced with the bottom half of the motor. And bend some bobs up, damage some fucking pistons. I don't know what damages you're gonna be fucking making, but you're gonna cause some fucking damages. So, if your alignment marks, if the cam sprocket or the crank move a little bit, it's no thing. Line it back up. Pay attention by ear. If you hear, you'll know when valves are bent. You know when valves are bent, you'll fucking hear the shit. So, uh, and I've done a shitload of timing jobs where the cam and crank kind of moved and all I did was realign it back up again and I was fucking good. So, that's that. Uh, Leak Auto Repair, I'm signing out. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Any questions, comments, or concern, leave it in the comment box. Hit the dislike button. You don't like, hit the dislike button. Um, anything I missed in this video, which I, I'm hoping you don't fucking uh, elaborate on, but uh, if I did, leave it in the comment. Whatever. Um, this particular time and job goes for this car itself, so you won't be able to use this method on different year making models. You could, but this is particularly for this 2004 PT Cruiser engine 2.4. So if you got a 2.4 engine, Chrysler, the PT, Cru PT Cruiser shit, this is for you. This video is for you. So that's that. I'm getting out of here. Hit that subscribe button.